Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at adding mixed numbers. So a mixed number is where we've got a whole number followed by a proper fraction. So when we want to add these, we're going to add the whole numbers separately and then the proper fractions, and then those results we will add together. So for this first example, we've got two and a half, add one and a third. So looking at my whole number parts first, I've got two in the first mixed number and one in the second. So what we're going to do here is add those together. So we would simply have two, add one, which gives us three. We're then going to take a look at the proper fractions. We've got one half and one third. So what we're going to do now is take those fractions, a half, and add on the third. So when we're adding fractions, we want the same common denominator. So looking at two and three, the lowest common multiple of two and three would actually be six. So we can find equivalent fractions for both of these, which are over six. So to find our equivalent fractions, starting with the half, we'd have done two multiplied by three to get six. So because we've multiplied the bottom by three, we'd have had to multiply the top by three also. So one times three would give us three. Then moving over to the third on the bottom, we'd have had three, we'd have had to have multiplied that by two to get six which means we'd have had to multiply the top by two also. So one times two would give us two. So now we've got three over six, add two over six, which would just be five over six. So now for our answer, we're just gonna combine these bits together. We're gonna to take this three, which we got from the whole number parts, and then we're gonna take this five over six, when we add these together, 3 add 5 over 6 is simply just 3 and 5 sixths. And that would be our answer to this particular problem. We're going to do the same for this next question. We've got 2 and 3 quarters, add 3 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to add my whole number parts first. So we've got 2, add 3, which would be equal to 5. And then adding the fractions, we'd have 3 over 4 plus 7 over 8. So I want to add these fractions together now. I want to look for the lowest common multiple for the denominators. Well, the lowest common multiple of 4 and 8 is actually 8. So I can convert these fractions into 8s. Well, the fraction on the right, the 7 over 8, is already over 8. So we can leave that as it is. We now want to change this 3 over 4. So to turn 4 into 8, we must have multiplied the bottom by 2. But then to keep this as an equivalent fraction, we'd have also had to have done that to the top. So 3 multiplied by 2 would give us 6. So now adding these fractions together, we've got 6 over 8. Add 7 over 8. That would actually give us 13 over 8. But now we've got an improper fraction. So in this scenario, we actually want to change it in back into a mixed number. So turning this back into a mixed number, we can see that 8 will go into 13 once and leave us with a remainder of 5. So the proper fraction part here would be 5 eighths. So 13 over 8 is the same as 1 and 5 eighths. So all I'm going to do now is add these two parts together. I'm going to take the 5, which I had at the beginning, I'm then going to add on this 1 and 5 eighths. So adding them together, all we've got to do is 5 add the 1, which is 6, and then we've got the remaining 5 eighths. So our final answer to 2 and 3 quarters, add 3 and 7 eighths, is 6 and 5 eighths. So now we've got a question where we're adding a mixed number to a proper fraction. Again, I'm going to follow the same method here. But we can see in this first question, the only whole number part we've got is 2. So I'm just going to write this 2 down here, ready to add on to our fraction later. So now I'm going to take the fraction parts. I'm going to take the half, the 1 over 2, and I'm going to add on the 1 over 5. So we need a common denominator. So to find that, we look for the lowest common multiple of 2 and 5, which is actually 10. So I can turn these two fractions into fractions over 10. So to do that, for the first one, we have a 2. We must have multiplied that by 5 to make 10. But to keep things equivalent, we've got to do the same to the top. So 1 multiplied by 5 is 5. Then to this 5, we would have had to have done 5 multiplied by 2 to give us 10. So again, to keep things equivalent, we'd have multiplied the top by 2 as well. So that would be 1 times 2, which is 2. 
So we've now got 5 over 10, add 2 over 10, which simplifies to 7 over 10. So now combining our two parts together, we've got this 2, we've got this 7 over 10. So all we need to do now is combine them together. So we then do 2 plus 7 over 10 which just simply becomes two and seven tenths. And that would be our final answer for that one. Okay, for this next question, we've got four and three quarters, add five sixths. So again, our whole number parts, we only have a four in this first mixed number, so I'm gonna put that four down here. Now focusing on the fractions, we've got three over four, add five over six. So now looking for a common denominator, we want the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6, which in this case would actually be 12. So I can have two fractions over 12. So starting with the 4, we'd have had to have done 4 multiplied by 3 to make 12, which means we'd have had to multiply the top also by 3. So 3 times 3 would give us 9. Then moving on to the 6, we'd have had to have multiplied that by 2 to make 12. So we do that to the top as well. So 5 times 2 would give us 10. So if we do 9 over 12, add 10 over 12, we get 19 over 12. Again, we've got a scenario where we've got an improper fraction now. So to make adding them together a bit easier, we want to change this to a mixed number. So we look, how many times does 12 fit into 19? Well, it fits in one whole time with a remainder of 7. So my proper fraction part now would be 7 over 12. So 19 over 12 is the same as 1 and 7 twelfths. So now taking the two components, I've got this 4 from earlier. I've then got this 1 and 7 twelfths. All we now have to do is add these together. So I would do 4 plus 1 and 7 twelfths. So we can see now all we have to do, combining the whole number parts, we've got 4 add 1, which is 5. Then we've got these remaining 7 twelfths. So the final answer to this question would be 5 and 7 twelfths. Okay, we've got some more questions to try now. If you want to have a go at these, feel free to pause the video here and we'll go through the solutions in just a few moments. Okay, for this first question, we've got two and four fifths, add five and two thirds. So we're going to add the whole number parts first. So we'd simply do two, add five, which gives us seven. We're then going to add the fractions. So we've got four over five, which we're then going to add 2 over 3. So we want a common denominator, so we look for the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3, which would actually be 15. So we're going to have two fractions over 15 here. So to get 15, we'd have had to have multiplied this 5 here by 3, which means we'd have done the same to the top. So we've got 4 times 3, which is 12. We would have then have had to multiply this 3 by 5, which we'd have done to the top. So then we've got 2 times 5, which is 10. So adding those two fractions together now, we've got 12 over 15, add 10 over 15. That would be the same as 22 over 15. Well, we've got an improper fraction there, so we want to change that into a mixed number. So how many times does 15 fit into 22? Well, it fits in once, and there'd be a remainder of 7. So our answer here would be 1 and 7 fifteenths. So just like before, we're going to take our whole number parts, which was seven. We're then going to take this mixed number of one and seven fifteenths, and then we'd simply just add these together. So we've got seven, add one and seven fifteenths, which would simply just be eight and seven fifteenths. And that would be our answer for that one. Okay, for this next question, we've got three and one third, add four and six over seven. So what we're going to do here is add our whole number parts first. So we've got three, add four, which gives us seven. Then taking these fractions, we've got a third and then six over seven, which we're going to add together. So we want a common denominator. The lowest common multiple of three and seven is actually 21. So we're going to look for equivalent fractions that are over 21. So for this word, first one, for the 3, we'd have had to have multiplied that by 7, which means we're going to do exactly the same to the top. So 1 times 7 is 7. So that would be 7 over 21. 
And then for this 7 here, to make that into 21, we'd have had to have multiplied that by 3, which means we'd have had to have done the same to the top also. So 6 times 3 gives us 18. So adding these two fractions together, we've now got 7 over 21, add 18 over 21, that would give us 25 over 21. So again, we've got an improper fraction, so we can turn that into a mixed number. 21 goes into 25 once with a remainder of 4, so that would be 1 and 4 over 21. So now all we have to do is add our two bits together. We need to add this 7 from the whole number parts, and then our 1 and 4 over 21 together. So we'd have 7 plus 1 and 4 over 21, which would give us 8 and 4 over 21. And that would be our answer for that one. Okay, for this next question, we've got 5 and 3 over 5, add 8 and 7 over 10. So again, we're going to add the 5 and the 8 together first, which gives us 13. Then taking our fractions, we've got 3 over 5 plus 7 over 10. So again, we want a common denominator. The lowest common multiple of 5 and 10 is actually 10. So we want two fractions over 10. We've already got 7 over 10, so we can leave that. But now we need to change this 5. So to get from 5 to 10, we must have multiplied by 2, which means I'm going to do exactly the same to the top. So 3 times 2 would give me 6. So now adding these two fractions together, we've got 6 over 10, add 7 over 10, which would give me 13 over 10. Again, I've got an improper fraction, so I want to change that into a mixed number. Well, 10 goes into 13 once with the remainder of 3, so that would be 1 and 3 over 10. So now adding these two parts together, we've got 13, add 1 and 3 over 10, which would give us a final answer of 14 and 3 over 10. And that would be the answer to that one. And for our final question, we've got 8 and 5 over 7, add 9 and 9 over 11. So again, we're going to add these whole number parts first. So 8, add 9 would be 17. We're then going to take the fractions. We've got 5 over 7, add 9 over 11. So we want a common denominator. The highest common factor of 7 and 11 is actually 77. So we want two equivalent fractions that are both over 77 this time. So for the first fraction, I would have had to have multiplied the 7 by 11 to make 77. So I'm going to do the same to the top. So 5 times 11 gives me 55. And then for the second fraction, we'd have had to have multiplied the 11 by 7 to get 77, which means we're going to multiply the top by 7 as well. So 7 times 9 gives us 63. So now we've got 55 over 77, add 63 over 77. Well, if we add them together, we actually get 118 over 77. So we've got an improper fraction, so we want to convert that into a mixed number. 77 will fit into 118 once, leaving us with a remainder of 41. So our mixed number would be 1 and 41 over 77. So now for the final step, we take this 17 and then our mixed number here, of 1 and 41 over 77, and we're simply going to add them together. So by adding these together, we get 18 and 41 over 77. And that would be the final answer to that question. So well done if you followed along with those, and that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing. If there are at all any other topics that you'd like me to go through next, then please just let me know down in the comments, and I'll try to make some videos on those topics as soon as possible. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.